Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing some daffodils in quite a loose style. I'm often asked how to loosen up paintings. A lot of beginners um, work quite tightly and want to learn how to loosen up. So there are a few tips we can um, have for that. The first is when you're doing your sketch, um, be very quick, don't get too bogged down in the detail and use your whole arm, move your arm around and use the whole paper as well. So perhaps setting a timer is a good idea. I know I've talked about this before, but if you set yourself a timer um, and make yourself do your sketching quite quickly, then you're going to get a much more loose and expressive picture. And don't use your eraser too much either. Um, st don't overthink things. Don't keep rubbing things out and starting again. If a line's wrong, just uh, carry on onto the next line and ignore it. So that's the first thing with your actual sketching. Keep your arm moving nice broad strokes and don't be over fussy and getting too much detail in there just get the main shape and essence of the flowers so the nice thing about these daffodils is you get those nice nodding heads with the buds um, some pieces of this picture I like more than others and I've put some close-ups at the end of the video and you'll see the bud on the right hand side I quite like the shape of that how that's worked out for catching the character of these daffodils at this time of year so I thought we would do them today as it's Easter Monday and the spring finally seems to have come. We've had a lovely sunny day today and uh, it's nice to get this cheerful yellow colour um, into our painting. So after you've done the initial sketch, leave your lines, let your lines show through. I mean some people don't like the lines showing but I think it's nice to see your sketch and you learn from that and it's just a practice anyway. So. Uh, keep your sketch there and something to work to. Some of your lines will disappear under your ink tents but uh, it's nice to have that loose feeling showing those pencil lines. So when we're going to do the ink tents I, it's quite a, a nice heavy paper it's a 200 pound paper and it's gummed all the way around so I can use plenty of water so you'll see first of all I spray the paper and as I go along I respray it because I keep it wet all the time. So that's another tip um, for keeping your painting loose is to keep it wet, allow things to drip, allow the colours to merge on the paper. Um, and now with the ink tents they tend to soak into the paper more and dye the paper more than your watercolours do. So you can't lift them off once they're dry, even if they're sort of half dry it's very difficult to lift them off. But because I work working very quickly and very wet, you can actually lift them off a little bit. So you will see where I want to get the light back on the petals and the background colours have come across the petals. If you get a very dry brush, you can lift that off. And then, of course, you've dried that piece of paper out where that petal is. And so the subsequent colours that you put on don't go into it. So you can lift off when you're working very quickly and very wet with the ink tents. But like I say, they won't lift off once they're dry. So the other good thing about the ink tents is you just can just keep building them up and building up the colour and even if it does dry you can come back and put more on top without disturbing what's already underneath. Like I say I do not let this painting dry out. I've timed it up, times the video by about three the speed of it so that gives you an idea of how long it took. Not very long at all, I just kept going with it. Um, so the other tip for keeping it loose as well as lots of water is again don't overthink your painting and again use a big brush. Um, if you start fiddling around with lots of little brushes and going again into the detail you're not going to get that nice loose feel so keep a big brush throughout the painting. Um, and what else have I got to tell you about this? So I didn't use too many colours. You'll see that I added some blue and some purple and I mean if you look at the daffodils in front of me there there's no blue and purple there but I've used those two both because they're sort of opposite on the colour wheel and they give a bit of contrast but also it gives um, you know some of the light and shade as well and some variety and I added a little bit of orange at the end as well again that's not in the daffodils but it just lifted the picture up a little bit so so you know think about your colours about balancing your colours so once you come to the painting stage don't worry as much about what's in front of you just just think about look at the picture itself you're creating a picture you're not necessarily copying exactly what's in front of you now look at how far away those daffodils are as well um, this is another thing that beginners tend to do is have the subject too close to them when they're painting push um, things as far away as you can get you'll see I'm, I've got the table lengthways if you've only got a small table you might want to put your subject further away on a windowsill or another little table further in the distance so don't have your know, everything too close to you give yourself a little bit of distance there 
Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can tell you. There was something and I've forgotten. Um, I do apologise if you see my mouth moving on, on the video. I was actually singing to myself, so that's a good thing as well. Um, somebody once said about the left hand and the right hand side of the brain, you've got to keep one side of the brain occupied while you're working. And so I've always got music on and you'll see I'm singing along. So I'm not concentrating too much on the painting i'm just enjoying myself uh, putting the colors on and having a bit of fun with it and that in that way you're going to loosen up and the more you do the more you loosen up so if you're doing something every day not trying to create a masterpiece not not over worrying about who's seeing it and it's just for your own pleasure and that way you're going to progress much more quickly than if you if you've been overworking everything and worrying and getting uptight about everything just do it for fun for your own pleasure and then you will improve no end okay um I'm trying to think what else i can tell you i think that's perhaps about it but if you've got any questions if you want to put those in the comments below uh, and i'll get back to you as soon as possible um, and i hope you've enjoyed that like i say i'll put some stills at the end of the video so you can see this more close up and give you an idea what it looks like close up not perfect again just to you know like i say enjoy doing it and i do particularly like that bud on the right hand side when we finish finish a picture we've always got bits that we like and bits that we don't like and that's just how it is but with the ink tents you can of course if it's once it's dried if you don't like something or if you want to go deeper with your shadows you can come back and work again on top of it okay so thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed that and i'll see you again soon bye for now